Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today is a special day because the video we're going to do is compare my beloved Jet Pin Router to my new to me Grizzly Pin Router. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time um, because for some reason or another, I've sort of become the pin router guy on YouTube. I don't know, I might not be the pin router guy. I'm certainly not the only person who uses pin routers, but uh, I get a lot of questions about pin routers from YouTube and from uh, on the website. So I thought this would be a great video to do. So let's dive right in. I wanna talk first about my beloved Jet Pin Router. Um, it actually has <laughs> sort of got that nickname. I think it even has its own hashtag on Instagram. But um, this pin router is from the 80s. It came from the OHM Banjo Company in Boulder, Colorado. And it sat there and sat there and sat there and um, they decided to sell it one day and I was in the right place at the right time and decided to buy it. This is an old school tool, but it's got a bunch of new features. So you probably wouldn't have had all of the stuff on this unit that, um, uh, that they had in the 80s that they did in the 50s. Does that make sense? Am I even saying that right? Um, so it's got, it's got some, some cool features and um, it's a little different from some of the pin routers that they would have used for pattern making back in the 50s, but same kind of idea. You've got a cutter and a pin, hence the whole pin router thing. This Grizzly pin router is a pretty neat tool and we've been really enjoying it so far. Um, it doesn't have a nickname, but, but, um, but we'll work on that. Um, the nice thing about the Grizzly unit is, it is my understanding, you can still buy them. Um, so you can still get parts for them and you can still um, you can go on the Grizzly catalog and you can order one of these up and a big truck will show up and uh, deliver a great big box, probably on a pallet or two. Um, this machine is a little bit different from my, uh, my Jet unit. But the, the, the concept is the same. It's got a cutter and it's got a pin and it's a pin router. Um, it's ideal for guitar making, just like um, the Jet unit. The pin router is definitely a throwback tool. And without getting too far into the weeds, um, let's talk a little bit about why anybody would want to use a pin router to build guitars in the year 2020. The pin router, either the Jet or the Grizzly, or even the uh, the ShopFox one that has the router, uh, you know, from like the handheld router that's in the machine armature thing, uh, they're really great for building guitars. Um, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get into the whole why wouldn't you just get a CNC machine. Um, the fact of the matter is that that uh, I think that pin routers are sexy, and um, I've had I've had four of them now, and these two guys are going to be staying with me. So I get a lot of questions about what's going on when I'm using my beloved pin router. Um, sometimes it's statements and sometimes it's questions, but it all pretty much means the same thing. So people have, uh, there's a disconnect with some folks and I wanna try to, try to work on some of that real quick here. Uh, the pin router is called the pin router because of this pin right here. Um, there's a spot for the pin to go in relation to the cutter. So the center of this cutter is in the same orientation as the center of this pin. Um, it's just that this one's up here and this one's down here. Ideally, you would want to use um, the same size cutter as you do the pin. Um, in this case, I've got half inch cutter and half inch pin, but I'm gonna show you guys a few little tips and tricks near the end of the video where why you wouldn't wanna have that set up like that. Um, but let's, let's get to it here. So let's say you had a guitar template like this one and you wanted to do the outline of the body on your pin router. You would attach the piece of stock to this. Um, you can use screws or you can use double stick tape or you can use masking tape and super glue or whatever the hell you want to use. But the idea is that the, um, the piece follows the outline of the template and the cutter trans transfers that same shape onto the actual lumber. Make sense? One of the neat things that the pin router can also do is it can plunge. Um, and we're gonna talk about that here in a second, but there is um, this crank right here can uh, raise the whole head mechanism up and down. And there is a, a pneumatic ram that moves the um, 
the, the, the plunge mechanism up and down, and I think it's about three inches of plunge depth, but don't quote me on that. So imagine if you had your template still attached to the body, and you placed the, say, pickup route onto the pin and plunged in the cutter, well then you could do the pickup route fast, efficiently, and as accurate as the template is. Some other neat things that you can do with the pin router would be to um, have a template set up. As you can see, this template has the outline, but it also has the neck pocket. Now dig this. Um, if I lower my pin, or if I, if I leave my pin raised up, this template will do the outline of the body all the way through there. But if I lower my pin, I can do the neck pocket as well. So does this make sense? So following the inside of the neck pocket, and we can get the neck pocket too. This template also has a stepped uh, portion for the control cavity. You can do the control cavity inside and the control cavity cover. Um, again, just by raising and lowering the pin. So now I'm going to raise the pin and you'll probably be able to see it in the video there. So now you can see the pin is riding on, on the inside dimension. That is one of the cool things about a pin router. Okay guys, let's deep dive into my beloved jet pin router. Okay, the motor on the jet pin router is a three horsepower single phase motor. Uh, these are available in three phase or single phase. Uh, I don't want to get into the whole which is better. Uh, three phase is certainly more efficient delivery system, but not everybody has access to three phase power. Um, so get whichever one works best for you. Um, and don't send me any emails about why three phase is better. <laughs> Um, let's see, we talked a little bit about this crank here. This has four inches of up and down, and as you can see, this raises this whole head assembly. So you can raise and lower the, um, this assembly in relation to the table with this crank here. Okay, on the inside of my very dirty beloved pin router, you can see the belt assembly and the, uh, the ram assembly. Back there, you can't really see it. It's a great big wheel. Hold on, let me get my flashlight. Let me see if I don't blind everybody here. See that great big wheel back there? Yeah, that big thing. When the motor is turning, that is turning. And when that is turning, the belt is turning. And when the belt is turning, the bit is turning. I'm gonna show you guys that here in just a second. So this is the pneumatic ram assembly. It, it has travel from here to here at the maximum. It can be abbreviated with um, these little guys here. So on the side, you can see there's, this is, this is just a way to have the, uh, the pin router go a little deeper or a little not as deep. Now it is set on one and as you can see, this is a very, a very tall, it's just, a, it's just a, a hex bolt. And if we move it to the six position, it is lower than that and it steps down. That's pretty handy. So uh, what we use that for is um, like we'll, we'll, set the, um, we'll set the depth and then we'll, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And by the time we get to six, we're at, we've got our setup to be about five eighths of a cut, which is absolutely perfect for stuff like fender neck pockets and fender pickup pockets. On this side, we have a little oiler here and we have a brake. Um, the brake, I'm going to, uh, again, I don't know if you guys can see because it's so dark in there and if I shine my flashlight in there, it will blind you, but let's try it. So there you can see what the brake looks like in the out position and now, uh, you can see what it looks like in the in position. And what it does is it stops this guy from going down. That is particularly handy when you're not using the ram. I always like to say to engage this brake. Um, it is now, it's now out. So engage this lock, brake. It's not really a brake, it's a lock. Engage this lock if you're not using the ram uh, and that will save you some, some headache and some hassle. 
Okay, the jet pin router is a really rugged, it's, uh, it's all steel construction except for the uh, extensions on the table, those are made of aluminum. Um, let me get my light going here. Um, that is the mechanism that raises and lowers the pin as well as adjusts the uh, center of the pin. As you can see here, the, the table can be um, uh, rotated or put at an angle to the pin. Um, that's, I've never actually done that, but I'm sure it could be useful in some pattern cutting applications. This foot switch here um, operates the RAM. And let's just go ahead and see what that looks like now. Um, the jet unit has a stop button and a start button. You'll notice that when I press the start button, nothing happens. That is because the stop button has a lock on it. So you can click that out, push it all the way in and, and have it stay, click it out and you're ready to go. So let's get it going. All right, as you can see, the router is now turning. Um, I'm going to operate the foot switch and the ram will come down just like that. And when I operate the foot switch again, it goes back up. So you can see where that would be super, super handy for plunge work. Inside, we've got the, um, the belt is spinning. The, uh, let me show you what that looks like when the ram works again. The whole assembly moves in that bushing there. And um, watch how the belt, see back there, there's, there's the motor. You see how the belt actually moves with the motor. If you've ever heard someone say, don't operate the uh, RAM mechanism on the pin router unless it's running, it is because the belt moves when you use the RAM. Um, so it's always a good idea to just go ahead and make sure it's operating um, while everything's running. Happy meal? Okay. Let's move over to the Grizzly unit. All right, you can pretty much see that the Grizzly is very, very similar to the jet assembly. The motor is on top. It is again a three horsepower motor, um, single phase. Uh, it has the same kind of um, adjustment unit, only it's in millimeters here. Um, let's see, let's undo the, I can look inside. Come on, man. All right, so you can see it's got the same kind of thing going on as the, as the jet. It's got the same wheel for um, setting depth stop. And that's pretty cool. They're really hard to get to on the, uh, on the Grizzly unit. So we've never actually adjusted those. Uh, but same kind of deal. Got the same on off switch here. Um, nice steel table. Uh, pins are a little bit different. They do not interchange. Here is a pin from the uh, jet unit, and as you can see, it does not, in fact, interchange into the, the Grizzly. My beloved pin router has the Christine 16 uh, pin. <laughs> okay, so uh, here we've got, hold on, let me get my flashlight. You can see again that the, um, uh, it, the table can be angled. Here is the uh, pin height adjustment unit. It's not quite as cool as the, uh, the jet, but it does work. Um, if you need to move the center of the pin, you have to adjust the whole shooting match here. So it's a little tr more tricky to, uh, to do. Um, again, we've got nice, um, this is, you know, wrought iron and steel. Um, it's a good unit, and uh, um, actually, it's, it's, it's really pretty nice. Uh, right now, I've got my uh, binding cutter bit in that. Uh, there's a few things that the, uh, the Grizzly unit has that the Jet doesn't have. Uh, of course, there's the pneumatic system there. It's located on the back of the Grizzly inside the, the assembly there. Um, here it is mounted on the outside. Um, the, the Grizzly has this lock mechanism. Uh, you can lock it. Uh, let's see, again it's got the, um, the crank for, the, um, for moving the whole assembly, although it does work backwards uh, from, the, from the jet, so you have to kind of convince yourself that you're, you're using it. Um, it does have this cool air thingy, 
which is pretty nice. I suppose you could mount one of those onto uh, an older pin router. Um, let's go ahead and fire it up. So the uh, the locking or the on the off button lock system is not on the um, on the Grizzly, and that's cool. But let's go ahead and fire this dude up. Hold on, I want to I want to raise up the. Um, I want to make sure that I raise up this guy before I turn it on um, because I don't know how deep this is going to go. I don't know who used it last and what I would hate to have happen is this guy come crashing into the table. I doubt it's going to happen, but you know, it takes a few extra seconds just to make sure. So let's turn her on. As you can hear, it's a little louder than the, uh, the jet and that's because it works at 20,000 RPM versus 10,000 for the jet. The same foot switch. And that's pretty much it. One of the neat features of the Grizzly tool is this brake here. You can actually speed up the acceleration of the stopping, if that makes any sense. So anyway, the brake is a cool feature and uh, that's definitely a neat thing. One cool thing that the Grizzly has in addition to the brake assembly is that the pins have two different size pins on each pin. <laughs> so this one looks like it's an eighth and three sixteenths. So it's kind of neat because you can use this guy and then flip it upside down. So you get two, two, two pins in one, whereas the jet is just the one. Okay, the jet um, bit removal tools are a little bit different. It has this guy, which attaches to this um, this pin here, and then you need a, this is a 15 16 wrench to go here, and that is the way that you change the bits. The same kind of deal on the on the Grizzly unit, only you don't have the, um, um, that, the, the, you, have, you have this kind of spanner, 36 millimeter on the, um, on the outside here, sorry about that guys. And then a one and an eighth for this. So again, they do not interchange, but that's okay because they come with the tools. One cool thing that you can do with pin routers that you can't do with a regular router with a bearing bit is you can use different size pins than you are using for your cutter. So we had a couple of pins made. This one has an O on it because it is oversized. Um, so this is slightly larger than a half inch cutter, which means that for stuff like neck pockets, if the pin is bigger than the cutter, the neck pocket route will be tighter than on your template. Um, so you can also like wrap tape around these like you guys have seen me do. Um, if you imagine if you, uh, like I was saying I had my binding um, rabbit cutter on this, you could do the same thing with an um, undersized pin and an oversized bit. You could, um, you could do a rabbit with your pin router without having to buy a special tool. You could just get a special pin made. <laughs> um, having special pin maids is tricky. It sounds like I got a call from a guy who is um, currently looking for some pins for his pin router and he's having a lot of trouble uh, having a machinist make said pins. So if you guys out there happen to be machinists and are willing to uh, put some uh, round stock in a lathe, let me know and I will let him know. Um, let's see. So guys, the pin router is uh, completely indispensable for the way that we do things here at Texas Toast. Uh, we use each unit several times every day. Um, now, I know what you're thinking, well, why do you have two if they're so unbelievably versatile? Uh, we leave a half inch, we half inch diameter shafts in my jet pin router and quarter inch diameter shaft tools in the Grizzly pin router. Um, or we can set up to do, you know, uh, a run of, so when we're doing like, say for example, base necks, if I'm cutting truss rod slots, I need a quarter inch pin and a quarter inch bit for the truss rod and then I need an eighth inch pin and an eighth inch bit for the um, steel or carbon fiber inserts that go in that. So they're all on the same template. So I go from one machine to the next and it just saves time. I don't have to, uh, to slow down to do that. 
Um, so you can imagine, if I, if I could have three pin routers, I absolutely would, although I have no idea what I would do with the third one right now. Although if I had one, I'm sure I would figure it out. The same, uh, same theory works with stuff like drill presses, router tables, uh, any tool that takes a little bit of time to set up um, and gets swapped out a lot. Obviously, you wouldn't need to have a bunch of band saws um, with different bandsaw blades, but I, it would be, it would certainly be a cool thing. Um, and I'm not gonna, I don't want to discourage anybody from buying tools. Uh, so which pin router would I buy? Well, I tell you what, if you can find a good deal on a jet unit, I would absolutely snap it up. We've had this unit a little bit longer and it's a slightly more refined tool. It does exactly the same thing as the Grizzly, but um, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a little smoother operation um, and I like it better, but that could be because I've had it for so much longer. Having said that, the Grizzly unit ain't no slouch either. Now, it's not quite as refined, it's not quite as subtle, um, you know, but uh, it is available, and that's a really cool thing. So if you're wanting to get into a pin router and you really, really want to wait until you find a jet or some other unit, um, feel free, but if you want to just get one, I've had no issues at all with this Grizzly unit. Uh, one of the cool things about it, uh, it's, got, it's got this brake and parts are available. Um, so the Grizzly unit is definitely a good tool and I can, I can recommend it. If you can't decide between the Jet and the Grizzly, do what I did, get them both. So guys, pin routers are one of my very favorite things to, to use in the shop. Um, I think they're really sexy, I think they're really dangerous, and I think they're really cool. Um, so if, uh, if, if you've ever thought about getting a pin router and you've been you know, kind of at a loss for uh, information about what a pin router does, or how to um, you know, swap out airlines on a pin router. That's not a whole lot of that stuff around anymore. And a bunch of the guys who used pin routers back in the day and who maintained them are either, they're not talking or they're crusty old farts or they're dead. So um, having a pin router and, and learning how to use it was certainly two very, very different things. Sort of like the uh, owning a piano and being a pianist. <laughs> okay. Guys, if you have any questions about what we talked about today, please leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to answer all the comments eventually. If you want to deep dive into pin routers, please uh, uh, feel free to send me an email at texastoastguitars.com and I will get back to you and we can deep dive into pin routing or whatever else you guys want to talk about as long as my wife lets me stay awake that night. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Further and to that end, if you appreciate content like this, please consider going over to our Patreon page and becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. And we always make sure that um, Patreon questions get answered in our live podcast, live stream thing every Sunday. I also like to uh, pose questions to Patreon members that we can talk about then. It's a whole thing, you'll see. Um, so uh, if you can't do Patreon though, we totally understand it. Please share the video as many places as you can and help us grow the channel that way. So guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.